what we did was we came under this arm and grabbed his collar, okay? So if his arm is still kind of in here, which sometimes it will be, you can easily take this arm and kind of hang brush it across between, between you two and catch his arm and push it out of the way, okay? So if his arm is in there, here, I can easily come up onto my, I can create a little bit of space, come up onto my, my toes, a windshield wipe my arm around, now I got that arm free, okay? and I can just easily swim inside and control it here. Okay, so now if you're ever kind of you know in a situation where you have have to get your arm under here, then you can't. Okay? So what we did is we reached four fingers in. Okay, with this bottom arm. This arm came thumb in. Right kind of next to his neck. We're not looking to get really deep. Right here. Okay. Then we sprawl the hip. Brought our elbow to our side and down. Okay, now if I'm too tight here, I can loosen my grip up, bring my elbow to the mat, sink my hips, and go north with my hand. Okay, so the action with my hand is this way as I'm holding on to the collar. Okay, so one more time, we're gonna start right here, over and under, north south, four fingers in. Okay. Collar right here. Now you can set up this way, uh, which, is, which is a really way to set it up. Or if, if you can't, if you don't want to kind of give it away, you can always kind of block on this arm because you're going to be over right. You can always kill your hips and just kind of like when you do a uh, cross collar jump from the mouth, lead with your elbow and then just come right here too. This will be a nice tight grip as well. So you can either start like that and do this one, kind of the looping variation. Or yeah. you can here, boom, put it here, lean with your elbow. Because if this kid's up and tough, I want to make space for this. Boom, right here. And then you can, if he's still tucking his chin, you can still kind of jimmy, you know, kind of shake your hand like, like the regular cross stroke, right? Same thing, same goes apply. Loosen your grip so that way your elbow hits the mat. Okay, once your elbow hits your mat, make sure this is, your wrist isn't, Bent. Oh, straight. Sorry. <laughs> Stick my finger in no. <laughs> So my wrist is bent here, so it's not really going to help with the choke. So as soon as I get my elbows done, make my wrist really strong, right? And if you squeeze too, as well as squeeze here, that'll help tighten the choke. It stiffens up your forearm, right? Like that. Okay. Questions on that? This is just a review from last week. Okay. So, same spot, right? We're here. We've got this grip, and he's kind of blocking our arm here. And I thought, let me get this. Okay. And if I try to do this other one, he's still there. I can't really get that. So, what I'm going to do, side, block his arm. Okay. Stack, and bring your knee up his back, and point my toes. Right here. Walk along the side of the back. Okay. Boom. Okay. Now I want to want you guys to kind of see that with my leg lined up with his back, I'm not going to be my hips aren't going to be square. It's going to be awkward if my hips are square. So you have to kind of pivot a little bit, and that makes it easier for you to hold his head. Okay. Anyways, as soon as I'm here, this knee starts coming up, but I want to leave my toes under his shoulder. So I gotta let go of his collar. I like to come here next to his elbow. I pull my knee up. His hand now comes and reinforces my knee. This elbow comes to my side. This knee pulls and I start laying back from the arm. If that's loose and he's turning his wrist in weird ways, and yeah, then I just bail. Come here into this arm. I want to leg over if I need to. And we're gonna stop there because there's whole lot of other stuff you can do. Any questions on that? I'm going to go over it again. But, um, I'm going to see if there's any questions. So in here, I got this. Right? I'm trying to get this, block in, whatever. So I get this out of the way. Okay. Kind of lift him a little bit so I can get my knee behind. Okay? And think about your knee as a pivot point. And I don't want to be here and just hang out. Right? So as I go, boom, 
right there. You just go in one motion, pull this out. Gotta let go. So this can come up. Pinch your elbow to your side. Pull this up here. Here. Okay. Questions on that? On those two? Nope. Okay, we're gonna partner up, go through this real quick, and then we'll move on to the uh, far side arm. Okay, hands up. One, two, three. Uh, a couple techniques, or we can start attacking this arm. That's what we're gonna do. So, for this arm, we got Kimura and arm bar. Okay, in the arm bar, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna spend a little extra time because there's a couple uh, variations I wanna show you. They're essentially the same thing, but one is slower and more methodical, and the other one's just a fast and to the point thing, and it can, it can tend to get a little bit sloppy, but uh, I think it's worth showing anyways because it's basically just a faster version of the other. So, first of all, we're gonna go here, we're gonna line ourselves up more north now, okay? This hand is now gonna come up and onto their, uh, their belly, okay? Now, that should be done. Like if I'm right here, as I'm coming around, that's being done at the same time. And now notice that his wrist and his forearm are on the side of my head and shoulder. Okay, that's where I want it. Okay, so now it all depends on what I'm looking for. I can use my leg and start driving him over and putting pressure here to catch a Kimura. Okay. Just come on right here, boom, and then back down. Typically, with this one, since I'm my my legs aren't pinching, I would bring it over. He would flatten his belly out or flatten his back out, probably, and I would come down to my hip <coughs> here, separate his arm from his body, and start looking this way. Okay. So from here, we got this arm. Bring this hand like in his armpit, even. Boom and over. You want to make this as tight as possible. Okay? So you're wedging his arm between your body and your forearm, right? Boom. I put pressure. Put pressure onto his arm. Can you move your arm around? You can move his wrist a little bit, but that's about it, right? Okay. So, from here, if you want like a more, uh, like a little bit more of a solid uh, Kimura, start walking your knees up and pin his other arm. This side, okay. Now I can come this way. Now this part right here, um, a lot of people will kind of shut their arm off first and then try to catch it with their hands. And I don't like that because it, if I just do that, he grab. Because yeah, he can do all sorts of defenses and it's kind of painful. So as for here, what I like to do is if I have this arm pin. Bring this knee up, this, this leg up, and keep my knee kind of pin, pin pushing it, right? So now I can put this arm, and I can put, I can put my, the back of my hand on my head, or I can go here. But I typically like to just come right here. That way, as I shut, I'm right there. Ready? To go for the Kimura. Right here, okay? Now, another thing with the Kimura, you should. Think about his elbow in relation to his shoulder. If his elbow's low, I have to turn a lot to finish the Kimura. If his elbow's up high, I don't have to finish, I don't have to turn much. Okay. Also, here, I like to I like to keep this like this as I turn because I can also go for the arm bar. Or it's real easy for me if he likes is really freaking out and he starts turning to his back, it's easy for me to just lay my hip down like this, and finish the Kimura this way. This is probably my favorite spot to finish the Kimura because it's so uh, controlling. It really smashing him, his head can't come up. Plus, if I can't get the Kimura here, I just come back. And I can start setting up arm bars or other, other uh, submissions. Okay? Any questions on that? I'll do it again just for us to see. So. First position, I move more north, bring my palm up onto his his belly. His belly. Okay. Try to get this as close as possible to his armpit. Okay. And you put pressure down. Notice my head is on his belly. 
So now I have this nice and tight. Okay? So, from here I can start working on his arm to pin it and step over it. Um, if I can't, then I just kind of work my body this way and, and try to pinch as much as possible here. Okay? Then I bring my hand up and notice when I shut, I'm pushing my shoulder. Okay? I'm not really moving my head out of the way as much as pushing my shoulder forward. Okay? You want to maintain tension on that wrist the whole time. Okay, my hand here, I catch it. Boom, fix my grip. Okay? And from here, if he's kind of flat like this, which is perfectly fine, you want to lift and you want to bring his arm away from his body like this. Okay? Bring it to the mat. But what I would do is, as bring it to the mat, just make sure your elbow comes in front of their hip. Like this. So now we can't bring his hand back to his. It's hard for him to bring his. Yeah, it's hard for him to grab his leg. It's hard for him to bring his hand to his body. Okay? Then sprawl out on your hip. That's on him. Walk your foot up. Boom. You can even use that to kind of roll him towards you a little bit. And turn his wrist up north. And here. Like this. Okay? Questions on that? You also have your straight arm locks and stuff there too. So. Uh, things to be just to really watch are this hand is super important. Okay? Bring it up and, in, and then pressure on that arm. Okay? And then as you're as you're going this way, is pressure with your shoulder into your head, okay? Like this, shrugging my shoulder. That's what's gonna pop his head off. Not me moving my head out of the way, it's my shoulder. Okay? Okay. Here, my hands ready to catch. You can do it this way too. Boom. Okay? If you're up this high, boom, get good posture. Turn. Okay? Boom. You can even come here. Turn this way. Finish it that way. I'll be able to finish it this way. Or this way. Okay? Questions? Okay, hands up. One, two, three.